What's up guys, welcome back. For those who don't know, my name's Jesse. I do a lot of filming of different fishing adventures that I go on, mostly in the state of Maine. But anyway, today I'm gonna kind of try to answer a question that I got a lot. And so I'm gonna go out and do some macro fishing and I'm gonna give you guys the tips that I have. So I'm gonna show you what I use, how to fish for them. And then also I'm gonna show you a really cool recipe that I just found the other day. And I'm really excited to actually try it out. It's something more intricate. So today I have a little more time, feeling ambitious. Anyway, let's get out there. Hopefully we can catch some fish. Otherwise, we don't have a video. Is there any way that you could sort of just sock me out so that like I, I don't know that I'm at work? In here, could I come home and think that I've been fishing all day? All right, so this is more or less where we're gonna go. But before I get set up, since a lot of you guys have asked questions about how to fish for mackerel or what I use anyway, I thought I'd show you. So there's a couple of things that I always pick up and you could tie these yourself, at least this component, but they're so cheap, it's a lot easier just to buy it. So if you guys want, I'll put links in the description below. Uh, but anyway, this is more or less what I use. So this in particular is just a long string of hooks. Each one has some plastic and bright fluorescent material to attract mackerel. Because mackerel, when they see flashes, they're gonna go after it. And they're not necessarily picky. So these rigs are really easy to use. So the way this works is you have, uh, you're gonna have where you tie it to the line. And then below is where you're gonna tie a weight, allowing you to cast this out there really far. And so this stuff is, this stuff's really cheap. I mean, I bought this for $2. And so I always bring a couple. That way I have them. But in addition to that, you're gonna want some, or at least this is what I use. There's probably a lot of things that you could use but you want something bright and flashy and attractive. So this is what I use. So these are weighted diamond jigs. So I have a half ounce here. So I will use a half ounce to three fourths of an ounce. There, so it's a weight, it's a hook, and it's also very bright and a big attractant to these, these mackerel. Here, this is essentially what the rig is gonna look like when you're done. I use a really light rod. I just happen to have a bait caster on here. This is just kind of my universal use for everything. But you don't really need a heavy setup. There's a lot of hooks on these, but even if I caught three, four at a time, it's gonna tax the rod, but it's not gonna, they're not gonna strip me. Especially they're not coordinated, right? Because they're swimming in all different directions. So I think it's a lot more fun to fight these fish on a, a lighter setup. So that's what I use. This is what it ends up looking like. You have all of your hooks, just tie it on in that stringer. Basically you tie this on and then below it, you're gonna clip in your diamond jig. You can see this one I've been using a lot, so it's been bashed up against rocks, so I'll probably swap this out. Simply snap that in, and just like that. So that's the rig I use, and it is, it's so simple. It catches mackerel. They're a very easy fish to catch. I think this is a great species for kids to get into fishing with, because you get a lot of action, plus the fish tastes pretty darn good too, so that doesn't hurt. Okay, so first off, you probably shouldn't come to cliffs like I do. There's plenty of other places to fish mackerel that are far more safe. You could just go to docks and harbors and always fish off of the piers there, and uh, you're just bound to catch some. I just come out here because I like how secluded it, I just like how secluded it is out here, and so that's pretty much why I come here. Okay, but the first, the major thing that we need to make sure we do is just basically you're gonna cast out as far as you can and once you do that you're going to allow it to sink down maybe 10 to 15 feet and once you reach that level you're going to jig allow it to sink and then jig again and so you're going to try to keep it around 10 to 15 feet while jigging it back to you so that way that diamond jig that we have on there is going to create a lot of movement it's going to flash and reflect sunlight and it's going to attract those mackerel if they're in the area and basically you're just gonna do this over and over and over until the school comes by and you catch a pile of fish. It's really just that simple. 
And like I said, you know, in, this is a great spot to fish for mackerel. I come here a lot, but harbors have plenty too. And I go there occasionally because it's on my way home just to drop by and grab some for dinner. I'd give you guys more tips, but I mean, that's more or less all there really is to it. If anyone has some other tips that I either forgot or uh, you want to throw in there that I don't know, please put them in the comments section down below so that way other people can uh, see them and then use them as well. Uh, so yeah, if anyone does that, thanks for doing that. That's uh, helpful to me and everyone else. So uh, let's just keep casting and yeah, I really won't be long at all. Maybe 10 minutes for sure and I will have some fish. So I'll check back with you guys then. There we go. Oh, I got a lot on there. <laughs> Whew. This is what happens when you see a school. You catch tons of them. Come on, fish. There we go. Look at all those. Dropped one, but that's okay. So essentially, that's all there is to it. That took a little bit. <laughs> when I say a little bit, that took seven minutes of casting. This mackerel came along, bit it, and I actually had four on my hooks, which is a little bit much for this tiny rod but it makes it a little more fun. So they're very fast to catch. So if I lose those other ones that maybe I wouldn't have if I had a large rod, you know, I don't mind. So we're gonna keep these. I just knocked this guy unconscious and I'm going to try to catch several more. So that way I can make some food for some other people later, as well as myself right now. All right, just about hitting high tide. Probably, uh, I don't have a watch, wow. I always carry a watch. I don't know, probably 15 minutes away from high tide. The ideal time to catch these fish. We know the schools are around, so when you're casting and you catch one, you know you're about to catch as many as you want. I'm gonna tighten my drag too. Those fish, uh, the five of them had me, had my rod pretty taxed. I don't know what the goal is. I think I'm gonna shoot for seven to 10 fish. I think will be a good number for me and some other people to have. Just reeling slow, twitching feeling for a fish bite. Sometimes I let it sink a little bit, especially after you've been reeling and jigging it up because that's going to cause it to raise in the water column. So letting it sit for a little bit brings it right back down to where it should be. There we go. Three this time. Hey. Wow, I actually landed all three. Not bad. It was one. Oh shoot. Don't swim away. So the only downside to a rig like this is the fact that it has so many hooks. When you're unhooking these fish, especially these guys, they kind of move everywhere. It's very easy to hook yourself. So I would say just be careful. Maybe bring pliers. This guy's kind of small, but we're keeping them. That is four more fish for the bag. And I am almost done. I think I'm gonna go for three more and we're gonna call that good. Should have enough for everyone else to eat. So I normally have a watch on so I could tell you how long it's been, but my guess is 20 minutes. 20 minutes and I have already got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven fish. Pretty much already hit that number I wanted to. Now, I don't know if I mentioned this, but the goal for today is not only to catch some mackerel for myself to cook later, but I'm also having some friends over and I'm gonna cook the same meal that I am today for them as well. So I'm trying to catch a lot more fish than I normally do. I'm gonna show you guys a really cool recipe that you can actually make with these fish. So, uh, I'm gonna get back out there, catch a few more. So just as another tip, also, sometimes when you catch a fish, it can be good to allow that fish to swim around a bit, just reel a lot slower, but keep some tension if you really want to keep them. Because what's going to happen is that spool is going to see all that guy's movement and he's going to follow him. And at the same time, some other fish are going to probably bite onto that hook as well. So if you're looking for a big stringer of fish, you know, three, four at a time, then it can be good to let it sit for a second. Also, if you feel a nibble and they didn't pick up on it, and just letting it sink a little bit and jigging in the same spot, they'll be more likely to go grab it. They travel in schools and they don't really want to break from the school, so if the, if the school
fool is not going to follow that fish and your line, then you're not going to catch any of them. So, that's uh, just one little tip. There we go. I think I just got one. Maybe a two. I don't know. Could be a couple. Hey! So many hooks. So it's really just as simple as that. You just gotta continue to cast and you'll catch plenty of fish. It doesn't take long at all. They really are delicious fish. And the colors on them are super nice. Kind of a... What would you call that? Like a pearl, in a sense. The bottom's a pearl. The top is basically the color of our ocean here, kind of slightly greenish and then black little lines in it. I've always thought they are a cool looking fish and they just also happen to be pretty delicious like like brook trout really. Okay I think I'm gonna call it good. I have nine fish which should be close to enough. If I have time I might try to catch a few more just to make sure. So as far as the ingredients go it's very simple. I have toasted sesame seeds, some black pepper. I couldn't find fresh chives. The garden's not big enough yet. So I just had to buy those. And of course we have an onion as well. Now one thing that I had to make yesterday was this. <laughs> so this is, these are pickled beets. Now I don't know how this recipe is gonna be, but I saw it online and thought I had to try it. So I made this yesterday very simple to make. Uh, I don't know how these are going to go with mackerel, but anyway, what you do is you just put red wine vinegar, some black pepper, a couple bay leaves, and some water, and you can find the recipe below. So you're simply going to bring that to a boil, and once at a boil, allow it to cool, boil up, and then cut up your beetroots, put that in, and allow it to pickle overnight. Oh my gosh, I nailed it. Look at that. Perfect. Yeah, that's unusual. Pretty simple, and honestly, I don't know how this is going to taste, but uh, I'm excited to try it, and I will eat just about anything, so hopefully it's good, because I don't know if the people I'm cooking for are going to probably be a little more picky than I am. I will eat literally anything. I'm not going to cook up anything but the fish, and pretty much all the hard part was done yesterday. It's a simple dish, great for a summer meal. So filleting mackerel is really easy. It's essentially just like any other fish. You just slide in right behind the backbone. And you should use a better knife than this, but that's okay. And we will just follow that as close as we can to the backbone all the way down. And that leaves you with this nice piece of meat. Of course, you still do have some ribs here. So to take those out, it's essentially just as easy. Take your knife, go right behind the ribs as close as you can, and then you kind of slide them up against the rib in order to remove them. And what you're left with is a fillet like this. I forgot my little cooking pot, but I do have this, which means I don't need that. So today I'm just going to be using some vegetable oil for the pan. So these won't take long at all. Let's take the peel off. Take that one right there. Show you a peek. Nice and crisp on the underside. So this recipe should actually be kind of char grilled, but I'm not I don't have that resource here. And on the back, so they they actually look quite good. I did forget to mention that we actually need one more ingredient. And this is gonna be kind of a 
dressing, if you will. And so this isn't exactly what it's supposed to be made out of, so I'm using sour cream, whereas I think the recipe calls for creme fraiche. I think that's how you pronounce it, not 100% sure. But I was told that sour cream is just a bit more sour than what I'm actually looking for. So it's gonna be made of that and wasabi, so you can make this to your taste, but I really like hot stuff, so I'm gonna make this a little warm. And then we'll mix that up, and this is just gonna go essentially right over the top of it. This will be interesting. Let's get this plated up. Now to start with, I'm gonna layer it with this pickled beetroot that I made. So there's a couple different cuts. I made some longer, thicker wedges, and there's also straight cuts or circle cuts. That's gonna make up the base. And uh, the recipe book, book simply said that this is just for a contrast of texture. It's meant to be more of a kind of fancier dish, I would say. Well, my GoPro, my GoPro just shut off. So you can already see essentially what I've made, but I'll make one more just to kind of show you. So the rounds are just for the base. And then on top of that, you add the wedges. And then next you put some uh, shallots just over the top like so. Add on your fish, some sesame seeds, and these are toasted. So the recipe actually calls for a black sesame seed, but this is all that I had. So we're gonna use those. A little bit of black pepper, some chives. And then to finish it off, we take some of that what would be creme fraiche, and we'll, I've been putting it off to the side, like so, and that is essentially it. This has to be the best, uh, well, the best looking meal that I've made so far. Definitely really unique, and I really wanted to do this to show, and I'm gonna find a place to eat this, but I really wanted to do this to show you guys kinda how good mackerel can actually look. Because I feel like a lot of people just think that it's kind of a trash fish that no one eats and people just use as bait. There we go, this is a better spot. But I truly believe that mackerel is one of the better fish that you can have. And there's a lot of reasons for that. So to start with, mackerel is really abundant and so you can pretty much find it everywhere. So that makes it a really good resource to use. It's easy to catch, it tastes super good. I encourage you guys to go try fresh mackerel. Now there's a big difference between mackerel that's not so fresh and then fresh mackerel because it is kind of fishy, but it only becomes fishy when it's sat there for a while. So if you get something like that, you know that you're not eating fresh mackerel. But anyway, let's give this a try and see how it tastes. Wow, that is, uh, that's super good. The, the, there's just so many interesting flavors. You have the beets that have been pickled, a little bit of spice from the raw onions and the wasabi sauce. And I'm really impressed how well the mackerel actually goes with these flavors. Now this is definitely a dish that you guys can make at home. And I encourage you to try it. This is a very good recipe. But man, is it good. So guys, let me know. I'd be really interested in finding out if, what your opinions were on mackerel before you started this video. And if I've encouraged you to actually go out and try mackerel again, give it a second chance, and kind of change your opinion on what mackerel really is. Because it truly is a good fish. And I think it's gotten a bad rap for all these years based on the simple fact that that it goes bad so quickly in a fish market. And so no one really gets that true flavor and they view it as this very oily and fishy taste when that is uh, by far not the case whatsoever. So let me know, are you gonna actually go out and try mackerel again, give it a second chance and see if you like it? Mm. So good. I got all my fish here. I'm super excited to go share that recipe with some other friends. And I hope you guys enjoyed, and I hope you learned something in the process. So as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.